Come on, Marcus. How am I supposed to get a Bryson move if you don't send me out a GRF board? Well, I'll tell you what, mate. We've got a pre-order sale going out tonight with a video at six o'clock. So if you're lucky and fast enough, you might pick yourself on up. Bull are you really gonna do me like that? I don't get any kind of preferential treatment. What for? Stealing all my content in the past? I've got no idea what you're talking about. Besides, you let Danny Fraud copy you word for word every single week. It's gonna provide a sound. How your feet are interacting with that ground. Yeah, I know, but he gets it all wrong anyway. Watch this. We wanna go one. Bang, so there's a pressure going down into the ground here. Wasn't well, that going to be swaying, Danny? There's no rotation at all. And then one, two, we get a rhythm of this. Whatever, man. I've got my own GRF board anyway. I didn't need yours. Don't bother with that sh Robin. Because like I said, we've got another pre-order going out tonight at six o'clock. But you're going to have to be quick, mate, because we've had a massive demand. And I've also had to save one for Danny Moore so it can help his viewers out. So you're going to prioritise him over me? You're a real piece of sh**, Marcus, you know that? Don't take it personally, mate. We've already been here once before, Robin. You've nicked my material once. If I send you a GRF system out, you're only going to do it again. Well, you know what, mate? How about that's exactly what I'm going to do? Just like I did before, I'm going to rip all your material off and you can't stop me. GRF board or no GRF board. Well, that's fine, Robin. If you want to do a good job and copy me properly, don't miss out on the pre-order. Anyway, got to go, mate. I'll see you later. Oh, stop it, Marcus. No, stop playing around, mate. Send me the board. Don't be an absolute f mate. Just send me the board, please. Come on. Oi. See you later. Oh, <sighs> when was that pre order again? Mate, the pre order's out now. Link's in the description. Good luck. God, what an absolute. C There's a lot of hype at the moment about Bryson Shambo and what he's done in the game. He's transformed performance levels to a new level and it's causing a lot of controversy. But in my mind, I think he's really pushing the boundaries and in respect of biomechanics, I think it's a really good thing. He's pushing performance limits and people are feeling uncomfortable with it now because he's now out driving them by quite a distance and it's changing the shape of the game. People are thinking now about the course setup, but how does he do it? How is he using these ground reaction forces and transferring it through to club head speed that's giving him a 30, 40, 50, 60 yard advantage on the field? You're gonna look at these forces by using the pressure play. I'm gonna take the place of Bryson DeChambeau. <laughs> I'm not promising any performance like that at all, but what we're gonna do is see what improvement we can make by attuning ourselves to these forces and optimizing them. So we're gonna see the result on the kinematic sequence. So that's the transfer of the angular velocity through the system resulting in club head speed. And we're gonna look at the ground reaction forces, but we're looking at the pressure. So we're looking at vertical force, but that's fine because from that we can deduce how we can recruit these forces better and how we can transfer them through the system. So essentially we're using the ground for the forces to rotate the pelvis and fire that sequence, i.e. kinetic chain, resulting in club head speed. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a capture, look at some data, discuss the data, look at an intervention, discuss how Bryson's moving, what we can do to improve our movement, maybe some of the things we can take from what Bryson's doing and apply to our own game, using a few exercises and training systems, and then retest and see what the difference is. So let's go and let's take our first capture. So got a good capture there. Real strike, really good strike. I'm surprised actually. <laughs> Made a really good swing. Let's have a look at the data. Okay, so we're gonna look at this capture and we're gonna start to look at the pressure movement and what's actually happening with the interaction with the ground. So the graph's measuring vertical ground reaction force. And let's have a look at what happens. So we unweight as we swing back. And then as I start to swing down, I load into the ground and then start to unload to impact. We can see as I start to swing back, my pressure moves in towards the right side. I've actually got a bit of <laughs> uh, negative torque going on there. So I'm actually, I'm at my, I've got a bit of counter torque. So I could, be talk, using that talk better. That white line, you can see that horizontal white line could be rotating clockwise, but it's not. It's going to in a minute. There we go. Now I start to create the clockwise torque. Oh, 
to the top. I've got pressure on the outside of the right foot as I'm unloaded. Now my pressure starts to shift. This is starting to create that elastic stretch. But really, my pressure's not. It's moving early to the left side. But as I'm starting to swing down, my pressure's really not far enough left. I've moved onto the balls of my feet, ready to unload, but my left arm is below parallel. So really, this is a little bit late unloading. I'm now going to start to push off the right, but there's not enough. You can see the white horizontal line there. That's the line of pressure. That should be rotating to the left. So I'm not really using torque from the ground. So this is a lot more upper body movement that's really providing this club head speed. So I need to really sharpen this up. So as I, here we should be, that white line should be really rotated counterclockwise, but it's not till after the ball. So I'm not recruiting that torque in the downswing. And I'm unloading really too late. So by the time you can see here on the graph, by the time I get to the bottom of the graph, I should really only be mid downswing, something like that, but I've, I've already hit the golf ball. So I'm not unloading early enough. I'm not using enough torque and I'm really having to use my upper body strength. And it's possibly why I've been injured in my left shoulder as well, as I've played more golf. So not really recruiting the ground enough. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk a little bit about what Bryson's doing, what we can do to tap into some of those movements that are gonna recruit those ground reaction forces and transfer them through the system. So we're gonna use the Zen GRF board and configure it in such a way that's gonna optimize this movement with the lower body and allow us, or just afford us the opportunity to improve the kinematic sequence. So I'm gonna place this in the anterior posterior direction. So basically front to back with the right foot, my trail foot. I'm gonna use the disc under the left. So we've got the rotation disc under the left foot, GRF board under the right. Now what's essentially happening, okay, when we swing back is I'm gonna bang the board towards the heel. That's gonna enable me to start to sequence the backswing. Once I've got to the top, we're gonna to start the downswing. Naturally, we're gonna be flexing, but then in order to get the power, we're gonna extend, but to extend, I'm gonna bang the board forward, and in doing that, my left foot is gonna to rotate towards the target. And it's this movement, which is essentially externally rotating the hips, which allows me to extend. It's allowing me to unload from the ground earlier. And we know from the graph earlier that I'm doing this too late. So by doing this earlier, I can extend. We interrupt this video to bring you an announcement from Marcus's favorite YouTube channel, The Golf Tour. <laughs> so guys, it's here. This is the winner of the GRF board, guys. Oh, it's exciting. The winner of the Zen GRF board is Craig from the Golf Duo. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Ah, oh, well, it, I mean, it's kind of expectant, seeing as I am Marcus's favourite student. Thanks, Marcus. <laughs> No, unfortunately, I'm not the winner. <laughs> but congratulations to the winner. Rip, here is your comment. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy it and the kids enjoy it and all of that stuff. Thanks, guys. Because the pelvis doesn't rotate by trying to rotate the hips, the pelvis rotates as a result of using the ground this way. So my pressure is moving towards the ball of my right foot and at the same time, my left leg is externally rotating. And it's this movement that creates this pelvic couple. So the pelvis rotates faster. The center of mass is elevated. So this is enabling me now to transfer this speed much, much easier through the system. So we've got the forces created at the ground, transferred through the body to the club head. So a few swings, very simple back and through. So I'm just getting a sense of how I'm using my lower body and timing it. Where is the club when I'm creating this movement with the lower body? This movement is essentially 
creating the downswing. It's essentially releasing the golf club. And the earlier, for me, the better. I can unload, accelerate it, and maintain that acceleration. Whereas I was getting a drop off because my hips were essentially moving towards internal rotation, which meant I was sliding, and that would prevent my pelvis from rotating. And then my left arm has to abduct off the body to get some speed, and it's not that controllable. Okay, so my swing's heavily dependent on timing and rhythm. And as I've got older, a bit shorter, so it's a bit easier to control. But that's not really what I want. I want to be getting some more distance, the Shambo style. So what we're going to do, we're going to start to tap into this force, feel that propulsion. This is right side propulsion mechanics, which is elevating my pelvis, but at the same time, it's rotating it. So this is giving me the feel of that movement. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the pressure plate. So you're going to see the pressure plate data as I'm now creating the Deschambeau move. So propulsion, pressure moving from heel to toe. It's actually creating almost like a snake pattern, similar to the gait cycle, where we're na naturally unloading, loading, and then unloading. And we're using propulsion mechanics to unload. But to unload, we have to extend, and to extend, we have to externally rotate. So we're actually not moving into internal rotation and driving to the target, contrary to what a lot of instruction has told us. It's actually the opposite. We're pushing, and we're using the balls of the feet, the first and the fifth met head. We're actually pushing, and this is allowing us to rotate the pelvis, providing the left leg's externally rotating. Now, using that exercise we've done with the board, is tapping us into this movement without even thinking. Because this is actually a natural, primitive movement we make when we throw or punch or use a, a baseball bat or a tennis racket. We've got these movements. Evolution has equipped us with these. So we don't have to fight them or think about them. We've got to let it happen. But all we're doing here is raising awareness. We're just attuning ourselves to enable ourselves to literally habitualize ourselves so the nervous system recognizes it. It's a recognizable movement. It's going to let us use it. Plus, we're going to maintain balance. While we do this, we're balanced. And once we start doing this, we start to compromise our balance because we're shifting pressure towards the edge of the base of support and we're starting to move into places that are restricting movement. And suddenly, the end of the chain is traveling very quick. We've got an unstable base and the system's in chaos. It's going to start breaking quick, it's going to start stopping, and we're not, it's not going to let us move the body because the body's wanting to maintain stability. So we're going to get this movement here from the board. Let's see how we go. We're going to take another capture. And what I'm going to do is really focus on the footboard feel and get off the ground earlier, but by using rotation. But we know how we get rotation. Right heel to toe. So you can see now that line of pressure is rotating clockwise and then counterclockwise. And then as soon as I start to swing and there's a horizontal element, now I'm starting to move side to side and you can see that yellow line, which is my center of pressure, is literally moving side to side. And this is momentum. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that quicker. So that pressure is already way left before I even start to release the club. And then the Deschambo move kicks in and we're good to go. And let's see if we can get that speed up. Let's see if we can get that kinematic sequence. So I'm going to hit a shot now and we'll capture. So I've absolutely crunched it for me. Let's see what's going on with that swing. So as we swing back, now I've got the torque straight away, working in the direction I'm swinging. Now I start to load. Pressure's moving earlier. I'm moving onto the ball of the foot with the right foot. When am I going to use the torque? There is some. The pressure's in the left side and I've unloaded. You can see here I'm at the bottom of the graph and I'm not at the ball yet. So I've unloaded a lot earlier. I could be using more torque. Need to get the left leg extended and rotated, but it's trying. So let's see what the maximum ground reaction force was. 2012, let's just compare that. Here we go, look at the bottom swing. What did we get to? 1,913, so 2012. So I think I've created an extra 100 Newtons of vertical, of potential vertical ground reaction force because that's loading. 
And then by the time I get into impact, so I'm down to 1,058 newtons just before I'm about to hit the ball. Let's have a look at the top graph and see where I am. So 109, 109 unloading much later. Similar position. So before, loading, maximally there. Later, 1,913 newtons, but it's very late. Unloading, I get to 1,058. That's the lowest I get to. So I've not really unloaded that much. Probably, what's that? I get to 1,000, that's, that's 900 newtons roughly. Whereas after using the Bryson move, or my version, my interpretation of the Bryson move, it ain't the Bryson move, but it's getting, but it's my interpretation of it. It's, I'm starting to use my body in a different way. You can see now I've got at the top 1,973. And then as I get to the golf ball now, I'm at the bottom. So I'm, so I'm in the similar place, but now I've only got 610 newtons. I've actually unloaded rough just over 400 newtons more after now with this move. That is potential speed through to the club. It's through impact I am unloading, whereas at the bottom, so I'm still not unloading. So I'm really just using my arms there. Whereas on the top, afterwards, after using the GRF board, I'm continuing to unload because I'm externally rotating. I'm at the pelvis is rotating, center of mass is lifting, so we've got more transfer of speed through to the arms. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, and um, you can see from the comparisons the difference that that exercise made. Focus primarily on the lower body movement, and how we can improve those forces, improve the timing of them, and ultimately create more opportunity to get force through to the golf club. So if you're interested in what the GRF Infinity Training System can do for you, why not take a look at the link in the description, all the details are on the side, and you'll be able to explore these forces just the way I have, and see what a difference it can make for you in your golf swing. And don't forget, keep a lookout for Friday night, six o'clock, for part two, to see how these improvements can translate into improving the function of the upper body and ultimately transferring that speed to the club head.